Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. Today I am bringing you some super awesome Easter DIYs. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. For this craft, you're going to need a mop head, some cardboard, and this printable, which I will have in the description box, a square Dollar Tree sign like this. But I'm going to be using this wood here, which is an old corn crate sent to me from a lovely subscriber, Dina. Thank you, Dina. And some scrapbook paper, or you can hand paint it either way. Now, I'm using a cutout because the one from the Dollar Tree is a little bit smaller than I wanted for this particular craft. You can use that. They do have these shapes I think they're foam bunnies and occasionally I see the wood bunnies from the Dollar Tree in this shape but you know I'm this is going to be a great video for those of you that don't have a Dollar Tree around you or don't have very good Dollar Trees around you because I'm going to show you how to do it with cardboard I have a philosophy that anytime you're going to cover something up not to waste the wood unless you actually need to see the wood that's when it gets really important and my Dollar Tree, believe it or not, my biggest best Dollar Tree has not yet unboxed their Easter stuff and I just got sick of it and I said, you know what? We're gonna find the exact same shapes as a Dollar Tree online and we're gonna show you guys how to make some really neat DIY. So you can see what I'm doing here. The first thing I did is I tried to cover the air and then I thought, for what I wanna do with this DIY, I've gotta start from the bottom up. So I started putting the yarn string or the mop string at the bottom and then I trimmed it just to see if it was gonna work. You don't have to do that right away. I just wanted to test it to make sure you could definitely see the shape when you were done trimming. And you're gonna keep adding these little mop threads, you know, and go slow. I actually would pull out the third, like I'm holding it up right now. So picture the third mop thread from the right or the fourth one. That's where I'd make my first cut as a measurement to make sure that I didn't go too high because you want it to fall in a nice area. You know, whatever you want. If you want them to be in the middle or a little higher, but you want that thread to fall in the right area. So just take your time, cut slowly, lift three at a time or so and cut you know hold it back look at it brush it a little bit make sure that it's all straight now this craft was a bit time consuming but in my opinion it was totally worth it because it came up so so cute and you saw there around the neck when I started gluing I did glue in at an angle a little bit and then I kind of brushed it out to the side so what I did was I squished the mop yarn thread kind of together in the center so I could pile in more so the fringe still looked even but I was able to get the shape of the neck where I was going up around that neck. So you'll see me here with the ear. I kind of push it in there. See, you'll see me add one more when I look like I can't. I'm going to push it in. See that? I start to pile it all in and because there's so much hot glue, I just pile and press. And that's pretty much how I handled every, you know, tough corner and curve. And it worked perfect. So just do it that way. And now I'm showing you how I held up three and you can see that I've cut that fourth one in already. So I have a guide and I'm gonna cut like that. Really important because it is a time consuming craft and you, you know, it's hard to pull off. Even if you put it on wood, it would be hard to pull off. It would leave fur behind. I mean, you can. I did pull off some of the air and it worked just fine. You, you just have to kind of use your scissors and cut down. Actually, you know, you can do it. So don't panic. If, if you have to pull it off, pull it off and just go slow. Don't tear the cardboard. If there's a little fur behind, use your scissors to cut it flush again so you can glue on top of it. It'll work out fine. And now I'm just finishing off the top ear. So what you see me doing here is taking advantage of those threads on the side to cover the cardboard. Another option which you could do, and I didn't think of it at the time until afterwards I went, oh Holly, you know, you could have just taken the mop thread apart because it breaks apart in three or four different strands and taken the thinnest strand and then just taken a thin, thin strip of hot glue and then edged the bunny. But I was afraid if I used the big mop thread at the time, I was thinking, oh, that would make the ears disappear, you know, where it kind of goes down in the center by his head and then you wouldn't have definition. So 
just so you know you can edge it that way. I'm just using regular old school glue when I glued that scrap paper down and you can also just hand paint those planks on and dry brush and do it that way. You don't have to have the paper. I just thought this paper was really beautiful and I bought some. That is from Hobby Lobby. They are bigger than Michael's. Totally beautiful. I love their designs even better so check it out if you live near a Hobby Lobby. I actually order online so check it out. And that's it. Now I'm just going to hot glue this little bunny down in the center. I chose sisal rope because I made this guy so big that when I went to make a frame out of the shims, he was actually too big. He wasn't going to fit. So I switched it to the sisal rope, which I ended up liking better. It made it look more rustic and more farmhouse. I'm adding a little burlap bow and I absolutely love this guy. So I have this basket that I was using to hold some towels in in my bathroom and my cat decided to chew the handle on one side and I didn't want to throw it away because I love baskets, especially during the Easter and springtime for farmhouse decor. If you don't have one though, this Dollar Tree plate would work just fine. You can cover both of them in this primer paint, that's what I did. And this is what we end up with. I did a light coat too because I just wanted it to look like a whitewash. You also will need some black foam board and I'm going to be cutting out that black foam board to fit in the center, which was a little tricky you guys. And I'll tell you, I had to keep trimming, keep trimming. Eventually we got there, but I did end up pressing in some craft paper inside the center there and pressed really hard to get creases to give me a better pattern. I recommend you do that. It was a lot easier just to use some paper and press it in there to get your edges really well. Yeah, thumbs up. I finally got it without damaging it. It was hard because the sides are really bumpy. So some, you know, to get it in there without wrinkling it. But see those wrinkles right there? You guys, I was so fed up. While I was trying to press it in there, my thumbnails, this is actually my second attempt with the foam board. I didn't even include that because that would have been just repetitive, but it kept, you know, the foam board at the Dollar Tree is very fragile. You get what you pay for. And my thumbnail kept making prints. It kept wrinkling. And I finally said, forget it. So I went and took some black poster board and used a glue stick. And I'm just going to glue it on top there to make it a little more durable. So we don't get those indentations while you're working with it. Because I had already cut one out, put it in, started doing my design on it. And then my thumbnail hit it and made a big groove. And I just went, we're done. We're done. We're going to do this again and we're going to go ahead and put the poster board on top and it will be a lot more fun that way because it will be a lot more durable. So I highly recommend you do that. And I'm using my sleeves here to put it down just to be sure you don't get, you know, I didn't get any glue on top of there because I didn't want any cross contamination because we're trying to get the look of a chalkboard. So I didn't want, you know, the shiny glue or a piece of glue on there. Now we end up with a nice smooth surface to work on. So I'm using this Dollar Tree sign, Happy Easter, that I got last year. And I'm going to cut the bunny off for a template here. And of course, I'm going to save that Happy Easter sign for another DIY. Isn't that cute? I think that's so cute with or without the bunny. That is so cute. And I'm going to go ahead and trace this bunny out. <laughs> Now after a lot of contemplation, I decided to trace this metal word from the Dollar Tree out onto the board. I was going to glue it on there, but it just seemed almost too reflective, like a mirror. I don't know. It just didn't, you know, I, I seriously stared at this for like 20 minutes. I'm like, no, we're going to do the whole thing like chalk. So I'm using these stencils. I believe these stencils are from Walmart. And I'm just going to do some cute little vines and leaves to give it a little bit of spring feeling there because it is supposed to be just a chalkboard piece of art here. And I'm using my chalk pen. This is a wet pen 
to trace the bunny and to fill in those leaves. I do use the chalk pen to fill in the leaves and I also make a final decision to use the chalk pen to fill in the word bunny. I was going to use paint but I end up just touching the word bunny up with the paint on top of the chalk pen and I use paint definitely for the bunny but it's just there was something about you know, when you you know it's not a real chalkboard right it's poster board so it's very very slippery and the texture just didn't feel like it felt like the paint might almost smear and have too many streaks if I tried to do it in with the words so I stuck with the chalk pen someone asked me if the chalk pen dries yes it does dry to a permanent uh, state when especially when you put it on paper it's not supposed to on a real chalkboard it's supposed to be erasable but I have read comments in Amazon where people said they left it on for a year and when they went to erase it it left a permanent you know uh, image behind so I don't know if they're totally erasable if you leave it too long but anyway this is what we end up with you guys I think it's so cute but here's my next thing because this was a basket I could not get it to glue down flat because it was bumpy it just wouldn't stick so my solution was using three of the towering blocks and just gluing it on top of that and then to again another solution to cover the edge there because it was no longer a tight fit i used some rope which ended up being super cute i would have probably ended up doing that anyway i put a bow in the corner there to cover where the rope meets and a little bow on his neck you guys and just adding some lamb's ear for some greenery and this is what we end up with So this is a bird cage that I bought from Michaels for a wedding decor piece. It actually sits on top of like a tiered tray, really big and high. And here are some Dollar Tree stovetop covers. I sprayed the cage with this spray paint and then I sprayed the stovetop covers with the hammer. I don't know if you can say, I'm not that impressed with the hammered one. I'm not sure about that. It looks good once I dress it up, but it wasn't, I thought it would look more like a, I don't know, I just thought it would be more contrast and a little bit more, noticeable but you really can maybe i didn't shake it enough i don't know but we will try it again that was my first time trying that and now i'm just painting the knob with a little bit of primer this is the kills primer k-i-l-z we're gonna let that dry meanwhile i'm using my favorite brush for like a faux rest and i'm pointing out that it's definitely a tweaked brush you don't want to use a brand new brush it makes it much harder to get the effect so when your brushes get kind of yucky and old save them for distressing techniques because i find at least that those work the easiest i'm using the color nutmeg from apple barrel paint and i'm just going to go about giving this some antiquing and rusting it up a little bit just to make it look nice and old and distressed going to use the same method to do the cage on the outside and on the inside. Now where the areas of metal meet and are soldered, that's where I hit it with rust for sure with the brush because in real life that is usually where things kind of tend to erode and corrode and get rusted. And now I'm gonna take this water-based stain to make the knob wood. I put one coat on and then I blow dry it. For those of you that watched my Halloween video, I discovered by accident this was the best way to get a really good wood. I mean, look at that. You just put it on in layers and it looks like real wood. Look at it. 
it looks absolutely beautiful. So I choose this method instead of the wax because it works a little bit better if you want it to look like wood, like a strong polished wood, it works a little bit better than the wax, but either one would work. So now I'm just taking some moss from Michaels and I'm using some wooden eggs from Michaels. They run about a dollar and I'm starting to decorate this. I am going to be showing you guys how to make a super cute Easter cage. It's not identical to this, but pretty close out of all Dollar Tree supplies. So look forward to that in upcoming videos. But I have been waiting to antique this one for the next DIY I'm making forever now. And I think this came up so, so pretty. <laughs> For this next DIY, I'm going to be using this pattern here. It's down below in my description box for free. You're going to need some cardboard. Go ahead and cut that pattern out. Now I'm going to outline it with a thicker marker because I ended up wanting it to be a little bit bigger than what I printed it up as, but you can adjust your printer to whatever size you want it to print up as. I show you how to do that in a brief tutorial in one of my Christmas videos. It's the one with the reindeer that's like flying. You can see it in the thumbnail if you want to look at that. It shows you a little tutorial on how to change any kind of size you want. So you're going to cut two of these bunnies out and then I'm going to start thickening him up here using any means necessary. I'm using a pool noodle, but you can use floral foam. You can use whatever you want. You're just getting them thicker and you want some weight. Mine ends up being an inch and a quarter wide because I want it to look really expensive and high quality. This is a DIY, you guys, that I actually saw in Urban Home, but they don't sell these things and so I don't know where they got it from. It was just part of the decor they had all around their furniture and I think I saw it about three years ago and I have been wanting it ever since and it's just not something you're going to find at the Dollar Tree or you know I've been looking online and I can't find it I'm sure it's somewhere I just don't know well the one I saw that was similar was $68 so no <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I end up adding the towering blocks for some weight there and for some more stability. And I'm just going to wrap this guy up now in masking tape. So this is what this little guy looks like when you're all done. Just make sure there are no holes, that everything is covered, and there's no big pieces of tape protruding out. It doesn't have to be perfect, trust me, but you don't want anything that's really jutting out. So take a utility knife or any kind of razor blade and just slice it as flat as you can. Just make sure everything is covered and pressed down because the next step we're gonna be using you're gonna, you know, he needs to be all encased. And also make sure that he's weighed down and it doesn't matter what you stuff him with, be creative. But the next thing you're gonna need is some pinto beans. Now I took my pinto beans and I put them in a blender and we end up with faux gravel. So this looks like some of that really nasty sand you get by lake fronts or beach fronts that are around cliffs that hurt your feet when you walk. I'll tell you I had an experience you guys where I got caught up in a wave once and when I came up that kind of gravel was in every single area you can imagine. It took me forever to get out of my hair. Oh my gosh. Anyway but I wanted this bunny very natural and earthy. I love that look for springtime and Easter. I think it is so so perfect. It kind of does that whole pottery barn energy I love that and I know that pinto beans will not break down with spray paint I have had crafts that have lasted 20 years using these and I know that they don't draw ants and really nothing draws ants if you seal it in enough with a McMod Podge or a clearer varnish you know ants don't like to eat that so as long as anything that you use is sealed in everywhere that's really not an issue. You just have to be careful about how you finish your craft. So I'm just going about, as you can see, covering this guy with Mod Podge and then covering him up with this faux gravel. Now, another thing that would have worked, I thought that would be really neat is the aquarium rocks that you use in the fish tank. So if you're in Walmart and you see some of the, 
you know, bags of the rocks that you put at the bottom of an aquarium, that would also work. Anything like that, but I just wanted this guy to look like he's made of stone. And when you put this in the blender, you're just kind of pulsing it, and you just pulse it. Pulsing it means you're just pressing that button down in little intervals, shaking it up, and kind of checking it out because you don't want to make it like a flower that you're going to cook with. You definitely want it to look like gravel. So after he dries the next day, this is what he looks like. And I took him out and I also spray painted him with two coats of clear varnish. So he's already sealed in pretty good, but I want to really encase this guy and make it so that none of this gravel falls off or is loose. I just didn't want to deal with that. I did brush it off before I sprayed him too. Make sure you do that. Make sure you brush off any loose areas, fill in any hole areas with a little more glue, let it dry again, take it outside, spray it with a varnish. And then this is your final step of just kind of sponging on a Mod Podge. And this is what he looks like when he dries. He is so cute. My last step to get the look that I'm after is to sponge a little bit of the dark gray I believe it's called oh it's not it's not black it's like a super dark smoky gray from apple barrel paint I can't think of what the name is but they only have one it's not pewter gray it's it's the next one I think it's charcoal gray or paint concrete no I think it's concrete but anyway I just want them to look like those little Beatrice Potter bunnies that kind of have the little spots I love this craft you guys and I'm tying a bow on like the one I saw but this is my absolute favorite Easter craft I've ever made. It looks so high end. It's awesome. If you had fun today, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel. I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you, you guys. And as always, until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.